Hello and welcome to the PC Machine Tech Help Show. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain, and we're going to continue on with the How to Make Money Blogging with WordPress series today. And we're going to go over some of the basic functionality of WordPress, and I'm going to explain a few things in a little more detail from the previous video. So I hope you enjoy. Now, as you know, we left off by basically creating the first blog we've ever created. And I wanted to explain to you what this URL we typed in here. Now it's called a URL, I hope you guys know that. But when you type in HTTP colon slash slash, that basically tells your computer that you're gonna be accessing a website. And that's a protocol for accessing a website. Now your computer was set up as a web server. So what happens is, is it's basically telling the browser, I need to look for a website. When you type in localhost, you're telling the browser that the website you're looking for is stored on a server called localhost. Now when you set up your computer as a server, localhost is basically your own personal computer. So what the browser is going to do is look within your own computer using that protocol to find a website that you'll type into the address after localhost. So what I'm basically saying is I want to access a website on my own computer. That's essentially what that means. Access website, local computer. Now, what you'll see before, I mean, what you'll see after that is we typed in my first blog with spaces in between it. Now, if you'll notice, this actually matches when we go, go ahead and minimize this. If we go back to my computer and then go to the C drive and then we go to uh, XAMP and then we go to htdocs, we made the folder called my first blog. So what we're doing is, is this folder is actually the point in which you're accessing the website. So my first blog is actually the folder you're telling the browser that's the folder in which the website is stored. So web protocol on my local computer in the folder my first blog and then you press enter. So what that, oh well as you can see it didn't come up on mine this will happen to you guys quite a bit. The spaces are replaced with percent twenty that just tells the browser that that's a space but if you don't get the website coming up I made the fundamental mistake of not going to my control panel and making sure that Apache and MySQL are both started. See now that they're running and I go back up here and I scroll up to the top I can press enter on it again and then my first blog comes up so that's one of the first fundamental mistakes that you can make. Um, it'll probably happen to you quite often. Now if you go back down here and you open up your control panel and you go ahead and check off the service boxes, it'll keep that from happening. And when you restart your computer, Apache and MySQL will automatically start on startup. You won't have to actually manually start them. So now let's go actually into the administrative tool panel of the website. Now a lot of people will go down here to Meta, Meta, uh, Meta and type it click site admin, I'm sorry, click site admin to manage their website. Personally, I like to get in the habit of typing in another folder. So it says my space first space blog, and I type in wp-admin slash. Now this lets you actually get to the administrator dashboard of your website. Now it might ask you to log in if you're not logged in already. I had it remember me, so it would remember. And now this is the basically your bread and butter of your entire WordPress website. The dashboard, of course, gives you what's going on right now. You have all the most recent information, posts, pages, and categories. Recent comments are people who've commented on your posts. Incoming links are people who are linking to you from the outside. Plugins are basically plugins that are available. We're going to talk more about that later. Quick Press lets you make a really, really quick blog post. And uh, of course, this stuff isn't really all that important. It's just news. Now, on the left hand side, we have our dashboard, and we can select updates. And what that does is it actually says what has available updates. Now, this will also check your plugins to see if there's any updates. You could check them off and update them. Or it'll check to make sure you have the latest version of WordPress. And you want to stay up to date with WordPress mostly for security purposes. Now, posts are on the left-hand side. And this is where you're actually going to write your own blog posts. And we're going to talk more about this later. Like I said, I'm doing a brief overview today so you understand all the aspects of it. This will give you basically everything that's going on on your uh, post side of your blog. You'll be able to read all of your previous posts you've uh, worked on. You can select the post. And then it'll bring up you know, all the information like the title, it'll tell you welcome to WordPress, what your actual blog bot, post body is, all your categories and publishing stats are on the right hand side. But we'll leave that to the actual tutorial on creating your uh, posts later on. Of course, add new will actually create a whole new one so you can enter the title and the body and everything else. Categories are post categories. So 
basically if you are going to have a bunch of different types of posts such as something about technology and then something about movies and, and basically all the different options you have you'd make categories so that you can uh, you can basically categorize each one of your posts so that they're related and people can find them easier post tags are actually a search engine optimization thing and we're going to talk more about that later as well in the media section, basically you can keep all of your files stored locally on your WordPress file. So if you want to add attached pictures, uh, videos, or things like that, you can just say add new. And then you can select a file. Of course, the maximum is up to 128 megabytes. There is a way to modify that later on. Now, if you go to the left-hand side under the links category, this is going to be all the links that can show up in your widgets on your sidebar. Now, that sounds really complicated, but these are uh, quick shortcuts to uh, websites you think are important. I actually use these for all my downloads at my website. If you look along the right-hand side of my website, all those links are actually stored in the links section. And then all I need to do is add a new link later on. I can specify the name, address, and description of that link, add it to a category, choose whether it opens up in a new page, and you know apply anything else uh, related to that picture it's a great way to optimize your photos and keep your links and keep them organized uh, link categories of course let you add categories much like the post categories but you're not really going to be you know it just lets you categorize certain sections of links pages on the left hand side these are actual pages that will show up at the top bar of your website if i go back to my first blog they show up here home is obviously your home page and about is your about page because right now it starts out with just those two pages adding new pages is very simple just click add new and you'll be able to add new pages we're going to go over these in more detail later on and then comments this is actually this actually keeps track of all the comments that are currently uh, posted on your website you can mark them as spam you can on approve them you can delete them or you could even edit them which i wouldn't recommend because that's kind of shady and then on the left hand side you have appearance and this is where you're going to determine your theme I'm going to talk about themes later on widgets are actually what going to determine whether um, what's going to show up in your sidebars and things like that your menus are pretty unimportant right now don't worry about things like that but there'll be drop down menus you can use at the top bar of your page this is actually a new feature to three background will actually let you choose a background image for your blog instead of using the default header will actually let you modify the header and these change depending on the theme that you're using now this is a theme that's built into WordPress as the default but uh, when we install new themes later on the appearance section might actually change if you go down to plugins this is gonna be one of the most important sections you're in this lets you add additional functionality to your website just by installing a separate plugin uh, users this is all the users that have access to your website so you can let other people be either writers or administrators and you can actually limit what they can do at your website this is where users sign up as well where they can read your website and uh, leave comments and ratings and things like that and in the tools section there's an import and export this is mostly for backing up and re-importing and then in settings this is your basic blog functionality now I know that was probably quite a bit of boring stuff but it's all really important to know how the actual inside structure of your website works. We'll be going over in more detail the most important aspects that you need to know of this. I was just giving you a basic overview of everything that's in it but you don't have to use everything that's completely optional and up to you. As always thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to leave comments and ratings and don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned.